Hey everyone, so it's been two years since I made one of these stop motion tutorials, but I discovered this new effect recently called Time Warp while making, uh, while working on some new stuff, and I like it a lot, so I wanted to make this tutorial to show you how to do it and to use it to smooth out motion. So this shot right here, um, this first one without Time Warp, I'm just doing everything that I described in the last tutorials, so time remapping and such, and this shot has Time Warp enabled. So hopefully you can tell that it's making the shot smoother, um, but hopefully you can't tell how it's doing it, or at least you can't see the bad side effects of it. So if I go here frame by frame, um, you can kind of see in some frames, like this one right here, that basically what it's doing is it's creating its own frames to fill in in between actual pictures I took. So uh, this picture right here looks like one that I actually took, right? Everything looks normal. Um, but then this one you can kind of see we've got some weird stuff going on and that's it trying to make its own frames. You definitely want to use it on a shot by shot basis. I know I tried it on a, another shot and I didn't like it, but for this one I quite like it. So let's look at how to use it. Here in After Effects I have all of my pictures for that shot imported. I'm going to select them all using Control A and drag them into a new pre-composition as usual. Now this right here I usually have it set to 2 which is what I like to work at because I think I take enough pictures that usually it looks good for each picture to last two frames. But to use time warp, we want to set it to one. Even if you know that that's too fast, set it to one to use time warp to smooth out the motion. Press OK. So now we have this composition of all the pictures. And as usual, I shot it backwards. So to fix that, I'm going to grab this pre-composition we just made, uh, drag it to a new pre-composition, right click, time, time reverse, and just to be neat, I'm going to make a bunch of pre-compositions. I'm going to grab that, pre-compose that, and then um, I'm going to go to Composition, Composition Settings. My pictures are huge, so I'm going to make them the size of my normal 1080p videos by changing the size of it to be 1920 by 1080. And instead of 2 seconds, because I know that 2 seconds is too fast, that's with every picture lasting only one frame, I'm going to just kind of guess and say 6 seconds. It's better to make it uh, longer than you need than not long enough. So I'm going to scale this down a little bit so I can see what's going on. But uh, yeah, so to use Time Warp, what I would normally do, as described in the last tutorials right here, is go right click, Time, Enable Time Remapping. But to use Time Warp to make the new frames and help smooth out the animation, I'm going to go to uh, Effects and Presets right here, search Time Warp like I've already done, Time Warp and drag it on to the shot. So once you've dragged Time Warp onto your layer, you can view uh, the effects for it in the effects panel right here. And you can see that by default, the method is pixel motion. It's adjusting time by speed, and the speed right here is set to 50, which means it's going 50% as fast as it normally would. And to fill in the frames in between that don't exist, it's using pixel motion. So pixel motion is what I had on for the example I showed. And like I said, frame by frame, it doesn't look that great, but hopefully when you play back the animation, it will look good. And you can adjust the speed. You can keyframe it by clicking the stopwatch, and then on your layer you can click U, and you can see the keyframes for it. So that's cool because let's say, you know, maybe while he's transforming, I really want this effect going on because I didn't do a great job of, animate hi of animating him. But later on, after he's kind of in closer to car mode, I think I did take a lot of pictures, so I'm just going to bump the speed back up to 100 so that it goes normally. Um, so that's kind of what's cool about Time Warp, is that you can still keyframe everything and have really fine controls over it. Plus you get this bonus feature of creating frames, which like I said, is kind of on a shot by shot basis of whether you want that or not. Um, pixel motion is one way that's creating frames, which is basically just it trying to draw its own frames, pixel by pixel. And if that's not working out for you, try Frame Mix, which is kind of a more traditional way of filling in frames for animation. So you could see these two sh pictures, that, uh, this frame and this frame are actual pictures I took. And it's filling in this new frame by just mixing the other two frames. And that can kind of look cool. Uh, for this shot, I don't like the way it looks. I definitely don't like the way it looks as much as Pixel Motion. So if I could get it to preview here real quick, you'll see kind of, um, I think it looks kind of too obvious that I'm using frame mix to 
fill things in. But if if that's what you think looks good, then, you know, like I said, shot by shot basis, you might want to try that. But yeah, that's the essence of pixel motion. Um, you can see that the end of the layer right here uh, is getting cut off, like we're not seeing him drive away because things are going too slow. So to fix that, you can just still enable time remapping by clicking time, enable time remapping. Um, but you don't want to mess with the keyframes, You just that just allows the layer to be extended so you can actually see what's going on. And if I fit it here, you can see that uh, 6 seconds was a decent amount of time for slowing it down. Now, like I said, you can keyframe the speed here, and you might want to do that. Or, to fine-tune things, what I did was I just took this pre-composition, and I pre-composed it again. And in this composition, I just right-clicked and did time, enable time remapping, and then I time remapped it as I normally would. So the cool thing about that is that you kind of get the control that, you, that you're that you used to, or at least if you do time remapping like I do in all your shots, I'm used to time remapping it so that the motion looks good. But by having pixel motion, in, by having, uh, excuse me, time warp enabled, you basically have double the frames that you took. So yeah, like I said a few times, it really just depends on the shot for whether or not time warp will help you smooth things out. But for this shot from me and a few others, it really did help. On some of them, it didn't help whatsoever, but it's a great tool to have and experiment with. So yeah, have fun with it.